Jeremiah in Arizona has been waiting for a while uh, to tell us about uh, why he believes in a God. So welcome, Jeremiah. You're on with Vice Rhino and Matt. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Who, um, I have a couple questions. Who was the a person who was just finished speaking prior to you coming on? Was that Matt? Uh, this is Matt speaking right now. So if this is the voice you heard, then yes. Okay, you were talking about religion, how you were in religion in Canada? No, oh, that's I went, me. No, Vice uh, Rhino was in Canada. Vice Rhino. Yeah, I, I live in Canada, and uh, yeah, I, oh, oh, we, oh. we have some fairly liberal churches here. I was not, yeah, I was not following who was who. Okay, so um, you mentioned a lot of things about religion, and um, I, I guess the best thing to do would be give you a little, about my, little bit about my background. I was raised a Catholic. I, so when I got to college, I threw away religion because I couldn't stand it. And when I retired and got myself an iPad and Internet, I started looking into it. And I kind of wanted to find God. And after that, I decided, well, I'm going to have to go to church to do that. So I went to many, many churches, probably about 17. Can I ask why you would have to go to a building in order to find an omnipresent being? That is an absolutely good question, and it took me four years to realize it was a mistake. Well, can I ask another question real quick? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You said that you, you got to a point where you kind of wanted to find God. Um, yeah. if, if, if you begin with the notion that, it's, that there's a God for you to find, isn't that biasing your search? Yeah. Yes, probably the bias came from my upbringing, I'm assuming. Okay, I just want to be clear. The bias was. And it, and it, yeah, and also that bias probably is what led me to Christian churches instead of like a Muslim church or some other right. kind of church, right? Yep. So I went to, like I said, about 17 various Christian churches in numerous states because I travel quite a bit. So, and I learned, like you said, okay, my wife and I both, we like at this point, after many years out of being out of churches now, it's like, whoa, what an eye opener. That's the place to go if you don't want to find God. I mean, they've got <laughs> everything upside down. <laughs> I have to I have to agree with you guys completely. Religion screwed up the world. Well, if you if you agreed with us completely, we wouldn't have much to discuss because we're atheists. I would agree, I agree with you completely about religion. That's why I'm, that's that's a question I like to ask. Yeah, you. See, the thing is, I'm not I'm not just I'm not just an a religionist. I'm an atheist. Okay. I do not believe that there's a god. So if we can no tell us tell us what god you believe in and why, because that's going to be the way okay. to move forward. Well, you answered my question, so I don't have to even ask that. So that's very good, because I'm, an, I'm anti-religion, but not anti-God. I'm a religion, but not a God, okay? I'm theist. Okay. I, I, I'm aware. That's why okay. I was wanting you to tell me which God you believe in and why. Yeah, and I found God after I left the churches, because I used to, I used to try to read the Bible and try to figure out what things meant, and I'd, get, I'd bookmark, um, what are they called, apologetics, you know, and different commentators on religion. And I, I could find a commentator that would agree with any thought I came up with. And if I found another commentator that didn't, I'd just discount him. Just believe the one that believed what I believed. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I, I'm yeah, still... We, I, we still want to know we, we what God know, do you believe in. What God do you believe in and why? I don't need all the backstory <laughs> about okay. all the gods you figured out weren't real. I got those covered. And all that, and all that stuff... And all that stuff didn't work. So I got my concepts of God from the Bible. I started reading it, and I started realizing that if I'm trying to interpret it on my own, I can't do it. So I had to say, I'm wrong. I can't figure it out. At that point, the Bible became pretty clear. And then I read some verses that said, the Lord will open your eyes once you give up yourself. And I only found that long afterwards. And I looked back and said, that must have been what happened. I understood an, an overarching theme of the Bible, what I call the big picture. And that big picture is completely encapsulated in the Bible verse where Jesus says, love God with all your heart. Okay, so uh, do, do you believe in the God of the Bible? That's where I got my God from was the Bible. So I'm going to tell you what my God is Okay. right now. God, and you have shown me my God since I've been listening to the phone conversation. You are kind and very wonderful and honest to the people you talk to on this on this station. And my God is honesty. Okay, but that's that's not the guide of the Bible, though. Not if you read the Bible. But, 
That's my God, and that's the God I got out of the Bible, and that is my God. And you said a number of I, things. Okay, read, read Deuteronomy 28 sometime and tell me that's a loving God. He, like, one of the punishments that he yeah. proclaims for Israel if they disobey yeah. him is that you will, be become, you will become betrothed to a woman, and then someone else will rape her. So, like, is that a loving God that will have your, your fiancé raped as a punishment for you? Okay, could I comment? Yeah. Okay. I cannot specifically comment on one verse. I actually could, but it would be futile. So, so you're just, you're just going to cherry pick that. So, so God is the God that you decided on without the Bible, and then the parts of the Bible that you agree with, you say that's the no, God no. that you believe in, but then you discard the ones you don't. Jeremiah, you, you, had, a, you had an epiphany, but it's flawed. You, at some point, realized, and you said this, that you couldn't interpret and understand the Bible on your own. And then later you found a verse that says, when you love God, you know, the Bible will be made clear. And then afterwards you said, you concluded, that's what must have happened. Well, I'm sorry, I'm happy to inform you actually, that when you reach the conclusion, that's what must have happened, that is a logical fallacy on your part. You cannot conclude that you, your new understanding is in fact a correct understanding from God. That is a fallacy. So what you need to do is show how so you, I need to know what your, what your God is because it's not the God of the Bible. Because if, you, if, you, if your God, the only thing you've defined about your God is that he's kind and wonderful and honest. But the God of the Bible um, is not necessarily kind and wonderful and honest, doesn't care about equality, is fine with slavery, endorses slavery, uh, doesn't have men and women being equal, does not provide evidence for his existence, left you to flounder this whole time. You have invented a God out of whole cloth based on your own understanding of the Bible. How do you prove that that God is real? I get to talk now. I, yeah. I asked a question. Normally after a question, that's your time to respond. Okay. Cause I was trying to respond to the other questions that you were bringing up. Cause uh, someone mentioned cherry picking verses. I don't, do that because I just picked one to show you the overarching theme that I saw in the entire. And I showed you a verse that disagrees with that overarching theme. How do you reconcile the two? Okay, I can reconcile that. You chose a verse that specifically condemns something and gives some kind of punishment, I believe. No, it's it. God is proclaiming what he is going to do to Israel for disobeying him. It's a whole long list. I just picked one thing out of it. It is a long list of horrible, horrible, horrible things that he is going to do to the nation of Israel for disobeying him. There's, there's things like force you to eat your children. There's send you back to Egypt to be slaves. He actually, the, the last verse of that chapter says that I'm like, I know I promised you that I would never send you back to Egypt to be slaves, but I'm going to send you back to Egypt to be slaves. So right there, God doesn't keep his promises. He says so himself. Um, like it, it, I, I can't, I can't read that chapter and come away with a picture of a loving God. And like, yeah, you can, you can show me all the verses you want that say God is love. God loves people. God wants you to love your neighbor. You can show me all those verses, but that doesn't square with an, a laundry list of things that he's going to do that are heinous, immoral things that he is saying that he is going to do. This isn't him telling other people what is just happening. This is him saying, I am going to do this. Yes, I can't disagree with you on all those things, but in my opinion, that those things are coming from a misinterpretation of the Bible. And the okay. no, 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 Okay. If my God is honesty, honesty exists. No, honesty does not exist. Um, is honesty is an abstract concept that evaluates whether or not a particular statement is accurate with respect to reality. You don't get to say that your God is an abstract concept. I mean, you can say that, 
but your God is now useless, and it's not the God of the Bible, and that is one of the most dishonest attempts to, de to de define a God into existence. It's absolute pablum garbage. Okay. See, if you're going to demonstrate that a God exists, you can't just say, my God is honesty and honesty exists. Because first of all, honesty does not exist as a thing. Honesty is an abstract concept. You might as well have said God is love and love exists. Well, kudos to you. Um, that's God not is the this God of foam, the Bible. piece of foam and this piece of foam exists. Yep. My I got God a cup is more, here that more changes colors. This cup changes colors based on temperatures. In, is is infinitely more powerful and impressive than any God you've proposed and any God anybody else has proposed. But if you're going to demonstrate that something exists, you can't just do the, well, my God is this, and that abstract concept exists. That's cheating. That's not a, that's not a defense of God. That's playing around with words, and it's an admission of defeat. What, what, did, what did God do in the Bible to prove to Pharaoh that he was real? Did he have Moses show up and say, hey, my God is a God of honesty and honesty exists. Is that what God did with, with Moses to Pharaoh? Did those things actually happen? Are they no. historically accurate? No, I, I don't think any of these things happened. I don't think it's historically accurate, but I was asking a question because you're the one advocating for the God of the Bible. In the Bible, what did God do to show, to have Moses do, to show Pharaoh he was real? Did he, did he pull some, some wordplay bullshit out or did he do some magic tricks and plagues? Well, I don't believe those things were accurately historical. Or historical. Wow. So I, I, I tell you what, Jeremiah, I'm just going to let you go because... Here's why. It doesn't matter okay. whether or not you think those things are historical. I don't think they're historical either. What I'm talking about is not what actually happened in the Bible. I'm talking about how to go about demonstrating that a God exists. If you had come with something like magic, okay, that'd be impressive. If you had come with something like evidence, that would be impressive. But when you come with, my God is honesty and honesty exists, now I know you, you are not taking this seriously. And I took it seriously. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. You talk. You said something about magic. What does that mean exactly? I, uh, so I would argue that turning a, a stick into a snake and uh, a plague and those things, I, I label those magics, miracles that go beyond uh, the natural. Yeah, that's kind of what we're talking about. Uh-huh. That's, that's correct. And those things happened in the Bible, didn't they? There, there's you the story. The stories are there. I don't think they happened. You don't think they happened. I don't. But but let's say they did happen. What are the What does the Bible continue to say happened after they happened? I, I I don't. So why are? It's like you didn't listen to a thing I said. It's your job to well, defend. It's your job to defend the God that you believe in. And I'm telling you, wordplay isn't going to do it. Do you have any evidence for your God? Do you have any evidence for your God? Things to think about. God do you have, do you have, I don't need you to give me shit to think about. I think all the time. I've thought through this stuff vastly more than you have. Do you have evidence for your God? Yes. What is it? It's something you can't see because you don't know me. If you knew me four years ago and you knew me now, you would Jeremiah, have do you have evidence that you can present to any other human being? To, do you have evidence that you can present to us that demonstrates the truth of the proposition that your God exists? Yes or no? You want evidence of a spiritual being. In that a was a yes or no question. Do you have evidence that you can present to us that confirms the existence of your God? Evidence you want? No. Bye. Thanks for wasting my time. God is honesty, and honesty is real, and I don't have any evidence. Yeah, I would be able to give you evidence, but you don't know me, and you don't know the person I was four years ago. You know how many, time, how many times have you 
advice to her, her well, this crap of, well, oh, I used to be a different person and God changed me? I, fairly frequently, but my, my question, like, I might be impressed if the person you were four years ago was missing a limb and you have documentation of that and yeah. now you have all your limbs. That, that so, would be, that'd be really, I mean, I wouldn't have an explanation for it. It probably wouldn't be enough to convince me that God exists, but it'd be a good start. It, yeah, it'd be a step in the right direction for sure.